Hey, welcome back to my garage. It's been about a week since I've turned anything. Um, I've been just busy with other things, but a couple days ago I did uh, cut up a bunch of pieces of wood into bulb blanks on the bandsaw and was trying to figure out what I was going to do next and I picked cedar. <laughs> um, because it's so damn hot and dry out here in Southern California, you're going to have to excuse the noise of the fan, but I'm not shutting it off. Even here in the evenings, it's, it's just hot in the garage. Um, I got this old camper, rough turn. It hasn't lost any weight in a week um, in, in moisture. Um, maybe it's because where that cup of wood comes from, like Australia or something, is used to the heat. But cedar, on the other hand, I did a bunch of different bowl blanks. Like I said, cut them into rounds, uh, put anchor seal on the ends again as I did this. And I could hear it cracking in my garage. Um, it is not doing well with the heat. Um, if you heard that, there might have been another. It's uh, mostly all in the sapwood. I'm not too concerned about it right now. Um, I'm more concerned about what shows up in the middle of my bowl. Um, here, hold on a second, I'll turn this around. Yeah, like I said, I'm more concerned about where these different knots and stuff come through and if I'll have to use epoxy again. But man, this thing has just been cracking like mad. Um, just as I've been out here in the garage. So I've tried to slow it down with some CA glue. Um, and that's how cedar got to the front of the line. Um, I'm gonna get a face plate mounted on it, uh, get it on the lathe and start turning the outside of the bowl tonight. Okay, got it mounted up on the lathe. Um, like I said, it's, the cracks just keep coming. Uh, it's been a few weeks since the last time I turned a cedar bowl. And it's about 20, 25 degrees hotter. Cedar does not like this kind of dry heat, that's for sure. So I'll be surprised if this holds together throughout, but it's already on here, it's already cracking, so I just got my face shield on. Uh, let's see how long it stays together. Um, it's uh, really out of balance, so I'll just be turning a little bit over 400 until I get, get this uh, closer. It's turning a lot of air for now. Anyhow, we'll see how this goes. Anyhow, it's just a bunch of ugly, loud, bouncy turning until I get this thing around. I'll bring it back when it's in better shape, because this is probably boring as hell.
Yes. It's coming along though. Little by little, getting rounder and rounder. <laughs> if this holds together, I don't know if you can see these cracks. But man, looks like they kind of go all the way through. Gotta turn most of that away. But just keep working it down. You, find, you can't save this kind of bark that's on cedar. Um, it's just gonna be there, it's gonna smell good. But uh, man, it's all a matter of if these cracks hold together. I'm gonna go sharpen up again. I've done it twice already. I'm gonna do it again and just try to keep finding the shape. sapwood cracks this shirt has a lot of knots in it that are going to be an issue I know I'm cutting the wrong way but uh, it's just while I'm making the making the shape once I get closer I want to take this down but I have a feeling these knots are just going to pop out on me good news other than this major crack here there's a little bit of that one left there. This whole thing's pretty much gone. Yeah. You got this major crack through the sapwood and some knots. So we're almost to the point where I can start refining the shape here. Bring it back in a bit. All right, I'm back a little later. Took a break. Um, I actually took it off the lathe and filled this this big crack uh, with CA glue, as well as a little over here, and flattened out the bottom. Um, I have to make my little, let me find the point, my little four inch recess. Okay, and I'll start turning the recess in a minute. There's a little bit of sap wood that'll be left on each side. Um, as long as it doesn't crack, that was significant. That was the one bad crack that's left. Um, I'm definitely going to take this off the lathe tonight and bring it in with me uh, because I won't be sanding. I'll be stopping after I finish the outside uh, shape of this bowl. Just needs to be smoothed up a little bit. Get this uh, recess dug out. Um, get rid of a few tool, tool marks and there's a little bit of a rise right there. Um, this knot seems solid. I don't know if you can see it. This knot up here does not. I have a feeling that's going to pop out on me. So I'll just have to epoxy it later if it does. Otherwise, we're getting closer. We'll bring it back as I start digging out this uh, recess. It's a quarter inch deep. Um, I'm gonna come back to this once I finish the curve of the outside, just in case it comes down and I need to go deeper. I don't wanna lose my uh, width.
damn crack that's not completely filled. A couple tool marks, a little bit of tear out. I'm gonna have to fix this up a little bit more. Just a little hump right here. And that stupid crack <laughs> that I'll never get rid of. Got a great surface from there to here. Great surface from there to there. A little bit of a hump. We gotta fix this. Okay, I'm being too picky, but I almost got the shape that I want. Still fighting this crack. If you can see it right here. It's not completely filled with uh, CA glue. Anyhow, with the general outside shaped, I fixed uh, the recess. Five and, a, five and one quarters inch base, four inch recess, dovetailed uh, just over a quarter inch deep. Um, I'm just gonna add some, some of those funky designs real quick. It's seven. fill this one last time take it off the lathe um, and then just take this and actually I'll shear scrape it one more time just to make sure it's nice and smooth minuscule tool marks there but easily sand it out it's just this crack um, almost all the saplets turned away there which is fine just a little bit so far the knots are holding up those are pretty much gone got that one this is the big crack lots of sapwood there there and there. So far so good. It's going to be, uh, I think it was three and three quarters inch deep. I took off a lot of wood. Anyhow, I'm going to run some sandpaper over this off camera, get this cleaned up a little bit. One more shear scrape and bring it in for the night. We'll come back with sanding the outside of this tomorrow sometime. that CA glue. There we go. There. Now that whole crack is filled. Hopefully, I don't know if it comes across on the camera with this glare. It's all full. I just got to clean up right here. Shear scraped. I know that middle, those lines in the middle um, aren't for everybody, a little decoration, but there's a method to my madness. Um, with this being my second uh, cedar bowl, I'm going to use X and I'll friction polish the outside. But once I turn out the, the recess, I'll use Mahoney's on that. Um, so that exposed, that exposed cedar, besides being cute and all, I guess, if that's what you want to call it, uh, it's still going to smell like cedar afterwards, where what's covered with the, with the wax will not. So that's my method to my madness, I guess. Anyhow, let me finish this sear scraping up so I can clean up tonight. Okay, let's get this guy off of here for tonight. Oh, that's smooth. I love this surface. It's like sanded to 180, 240 there. <laughs> Just a little bit of sapwood on that side. More on that side. You can see the bottom from where I brought it down to on the sides because of the 
different issues. Um, it'll be three and three quarters deep, but you can see the curve there that was going for. So I'm gonna pick up, you know, I see a clean shot, but it is an absolute mess, which is good because it smells great. But uh, I'm gonna pick up for tonight. I'll get, I'll leave the face plate on for tonight just in case anything happens, but I'm bringing this in the house to keep it in a better climate than here in the garage. <laughs> I've spent so much time on these cracks. Turned a lot away, um, but this is the only one remaining. Just got, the, like I said, those two knots. But it's got the shape. So I guess I'll just bring it back tomorrow, sand the outside, and core out the middle. Have a good night. Well, I'm back the next day, afternoon, after keeping it inside where it's cooler. But sometimes you're just fighting a losing battle. That, only, that end doesn't look as bad as this freaking end does. Unbelievable. This wood just cracking and cracking and cracking. So I'm not even sure what I should do. I've glued it up to try to prevent it. it just keeps cracking. Um, it's just too damn hot in this desert uh, for this type of wood, I guess, at this time of year. So I'm not sure. I think I'm going to get it on there. Uh, I still got the faceplate on the bottom. Um, I think I'm going to get it on and quickly try to shear scrape one more time and then get it flipped around, screw sanding. I ain't gonna put that time and effort into it until I know this is gonna work. Um, thinking of flipping around in the recess and just hollowing it out as fast as I can to see if uh, it can pre prevent whatever kind of stress cracking is happening. Um, yeah, I'm at a loss. It's just, with this weather, this is just <laughs> a losing battle, like I said. So all I can do is try, so. Let me get this scraped and then flipped around. I'll bring it back when it's flipped around in the four jaw chuck and hollow out the middle. All right, it's all mounted up, but it's just a series of cracks. Um, I got a nice surface again, but I mean, there's nothing I could do. I can't beat this heat and this how this wood's reacting to it. So we'll see if it holds together um, while we hollow this out. I mean, it wouldn't shock me to see it just come apart. We'll keep the tail stock up for now. See what happens. Um, maybe if it, uh, if I can succeed in hollowing this out, um, I can coat it with a sanding sealer and then try uh, try gluing up all those cracks one more time. We'll, but we'll see. thinking about uh, drilling out the center, whether I should leave this tailstock for extra support or just drill it out and go as fast as I can. Maybe I'll flip a coin.
decided to leave the tail stock up for now as long as I could. Hey, that was pesky. <laughs> I guess I should worry about the cracks more than these knots. Anyhow, we'll keep, I'll bring it back as I get closer. I'm just gonna, I'm going as fast as I can, aggressively as I can. If it cracks and I lose it, so be it. But uh, I just wanna get it down to a, a decent, uh, decent thickness so I could try to try to save it uh, like I said put some kind of sealer on it and, and then so I quit putting CA glue just to put more CA glue I want to I want to see if it can be done once and for all the right way and now we'll keep going I'm hoping digging this out takes some of the stress off of the bowl couldn't reach so I had to get the tail stock out of the way. I had quite a bit of more hollowing out to do digging out of this uh, center so at least the cracking seemed to have stopped so it is helping. Anyhow I'm gonna switch to the curved tool, toolbar or tool rest and uh, get back to it. We'll clean up the bottom a little bit more and then we got it. scraper along the bottom and yeah, made it rougher than my bowl gouge it's this one knot that comes through the other side that I don't want to disturb too much I want to leave that in there that would be too much epoxy anyway none of those cracks from the outside it's got all this dust none of those outside cracks come through it's littered without littered with cracks right There's nothing but cracks on the outside. Ain't 
coming through. So, I'm trying to think, I'm starting to have hope that I actually will save this bowl. There's a little flaw right there, but I'm just gonna have to sand that out. I ain't coming back to this rim and, and screwing that up. I ain't coming up to the sides and screwing it up either. I think I'll do, since this gave a rougher pass, I'll sharpen up and try it again, or use the 3 8 inch bowl gouge one more time on the bottom. Yep. Yep, might run, might scrape the outside again, see if I can get past those cracks, because I did leave this a little thick. <laughs> but either that or we just seal it. Okay, I think the inside is done. I didn't show everything, and I know I've been talking too much, but I'm trying to show the struggle I've been going through. There's a few tool marks right there to sand it out, and there's one rough spot down here. I was really gentle because I didn't want to lose anything with those knots right there at the rim. I was gentle around this knot too because it comes through to the other side. But I got a clean rim, clean inside. I'm documenting this right now because I am contemplating coming back to the outside with this turnaround and I very well may screw it up. You can see I got my uh, tool rest already positioned for this too. A little bit of scraping. These cracks don't come through. I don't know how deep they go. And like I said, I'll put a sanding sealer on and then CA glue with anything that's remaining. But I'm thinking I can improve this outside a little bit. So I'm gonna give it a shot. That's the only bit of sap with this left. The other side got turned out. It's obviously much smaller as I've turned away a lot of this, uh, a lot of my problems. But, I mean, I thought this was a lost cause, and the inside has me thinking it's salvageable. So hopefully I don't screw up this outside, but I think we're going to try it. Not too bad, not great either. Um, I did use my bowl gouge as best I could, left-handed. I didn't get the best cut. And like I said, I'm a, it's running true, but I'm afraid to come up to the all the way to the edge. It's actually not that bad of a surface. I mean, the cracks are still here. They need to be filled. Let me switch sides with you so you can see better. These cracks, once I get a sanding sealer on, will need to be filled, but it's not that bad of a surface, actually, considering. The only tear out is up here. I gotta go this way, I'm just afraid to go to the edge. <laughs> That's that knot where that big one comes through there that I didn't wanna lose. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty smooth, not bad. I'll see if I can tidy up just this end. And then we'll get to that sealer. All right, let's get some sanding sealer on this. I probably could have went for a better surface, but it turned out pretty good. I figured for once I'd stop while I was ahead. Obviously there was enough uh, moisture left in this wood where it combined with this ridiculous dry heat it was just making this cedar crack like mad. Everything I did, just check, check, check. So I'm lucky to have just been able to turn this. So I'm gonna count that as a plus. Anyhow, the plan is get this sanding sealer on it tonight. Now I'm gonna go over all these cracks with CA glue again. The reason behind this is that I'm done turning, right? So I don't want this uh, CA glue to stain the wood and ruin it with all those marks. So 
that's the reason behind this. This will allow me to fill these cracks without staining on the outside. And then I'll come back the following day. <laughs> you can hear this in cracks though. I'll come back the following day and uh, we'll see if it needs any more sanding sealer, but I'll do the sanding. I'll do the sanding and uh, finishing another day. Just leave it in the check. Let me move you over here. Hopefully this turns out okay. It should. <laughs> God damn, it just keeps cracking. Hopefully I can get this day. The final size, if this doesn't crack apart here at the end, <laughs> the final size is 10 and 3 quarters. Uh, it's perfectly round. It did move a little bit, and that's why I went back over the outside, turned away some of the cracks. No cracks on the inside. But like I said, 10 and 3 quarters. Uh, the walls are just over 3 eighths thick. Um, it's three and three quarters, yeah, three and three quarters high, um, and three inches deep, or just over three inches deep. So that's the final size. So anyhow, just putting the sanding sealer on it, and I'll fill it with CA glue. I'll bring it back tomorrow when I come to sand this thing. Hopefully it's still, it's still doing okay. taking some of the gunk off from the sanding shellac based sanding sealer of course i forgot to wear a glove my daughter hates that because i end up making her pour her nail polish removal over my hands so i can get that crap off <laughs> anyhow i forgot to mention earlier the obvious solution to not having to deal with this the heat's not going to go away that just goes to show if you got the time turn it all at once inside and outside so you don't have as many problems as I do but when you got to break it up like this you just got to do the best you can anyhow that sanding sealer should prevent the CA glue from staining as it fills these cracks again there are no cracks on the inside it still needs to be sanded obviously uh, this is nowhere near good enough, right? Um, but what I'll do is, uh, you know, once I fill that with CA glue, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll sand it all. Any excess CA glue will get sanded off. And then I'll do another coat of sanding sealer um, after, after it's all sanded and then pick up with the finishing. And in case I didn't uh, say it all correctly, that's my plan. Hopefully it's still together tomorrow. Last look for tonight. I put uh, CA glue everywhere. I could possibly need it either now or later. Um, and it looks like Frankenstein again. But that's okay. I didn't uh, I didn't put CA glue in here because I didn't put the sanding sealer on, in the recess, but obviously where I did put sanding sealer. So it's back to this, but hopefully this will be the end of the cracking now that it's uh, that it's in, in this condition. Um, I can't imagine it'll do any more cracking, but you never know. Anyhow, I'll either mount it back up and uh, give it one last scrape before I sand it or just start sanding tomorrow. Um, obviously, it's going to be a chore, but I ain't going to show you all that. I'll bring it back once I got it sanded and when it's ready for a finish. Have a good night. All right, it's finally cool enough to come back in my garage and do some sanding. Um, I'm not going to do any more scraping because I don't want this glue pulling out any of the end grain, right? Uh, so I've already done uh, the bottom. It sands up nice. It just takes the glue off. It's just going to be slow. I'm going to go 7 grits, 80 to 600, uh, turning in reverse at around 421. And just work it all up.
All right. <laughs> Hour and a half later. There she is. Hopefully this will show without too much glare. Did the trick. Um, if I wouldn't have showed you the whole process and all my struggles with this cracking wood, it would have just been a cool bowl in the end. <laughs> Took a lot of sanding. I hate starting with 80 grit. Um, but yeah, 180 to 600. This is the only portion of sap wood that's left. Um, but yeah sanded it down um, you can see all the cracks they were filled with ca glue no staining um, so yeah uh, just took a lot of work but in the end the bowl salvaged didn't lose it stayed together uh, looks great now um, so i think i'm just going to clean up for tonight i'm going to put another coat of you have already seen me put sanding sealer on so i'm not going to show it again I'm gonna put another coat of sanding sealer on this. Um, I'll buff it off with uh, some steel wool and then come back tomorrow and put a finish on it. Other than that, finish turning out the recess. That's all that's left. But hopefully this comes out in camera. Pretty cool. No more cracking other than the ones that I filled. No stains. Beautiful piece of wood. Show the inside with the with the abrasive paste on the outside with the wax, but all that work did it. Uh, no new cracks. So all these lines are just part of the wood, part of the grain design. I don't know. I can't explain why, but it's not it's not glue stains. No cracks, no stains. It's just kind of the folds, the way it wrinkles together. The grain, gorgeous. Very cool. Happy this is going to work out. Just a quick cool little look. Came out absolutely beautiful. Look you can see. Look at that. It's got more cracks than. Anything I've ever worked with before. Oops, I didn't even bump the camera. You can see how I filled it with all the CA glue. No stains, these are just little lines in the grain. Oh my god, it's unbelievable how beautiful and shiny it turned out. I thought for sure it was lost with all those cracks. Mr. Cracky. Anyhow, just gotta turn out the recess. Finish the bottom with Mahoney's and it's a done deal. Just a quick look in case I screw up that last part and they live it that way. Absolutely gorgeous. Cracks and all. Alright, got it up against a jam chuck, running about as true as I could get it. You need a couple extra hands to get this part down. Anyhow, let's see if I can remove this uh, recess. too far. A little bit more. It's going to go a little bit deeper. Shoot. It's not perfectly lined up either.
Alright. Just have to sand up the bottom. It's spinning true, but it's a little bit thicker on one side than the other in terms of my base. I can't put wood back now, so it's pretty much, it is what it is. Sand in the bottom. Got to the 11th hour. Man, I'm just a little bit careless. Bottom sanded out nice, so that's not what I was careless about. Like I said, I needed a couple extra hands trying to line this up perfectly. It wasn't rocking, but you can see it's a little thin. My base sits flat, but it's not uh, even. Got about a quarter inch there and about five sixteenths there, so it's just not perfectly round minuscule issue but what's pissed me off is uh i carelessly set this down and it's too late to turn i scuffed it that shows up right there when i had 180 grit just lightly touched it but scuffed it there's nothing i can do about it now so it's just gonna have to be one of those character flaws or whatever but disappointed in myself uh, but at the end of all this just carelessness Anyhow, let's get a finish on the bottom. Just added my honeys to the bottom. I know this is a crazy long video, but I just wanted to show you the whole little bits, little snippets of the whole process, all my struggles through it, imperfections and all, right? You know, this wasn't so straightforward with all these cracks. Anyhow, in a couple days when I add the Mahoney's wax on top of this, let this cure and I'll add that wax and then show you the finished product. Have a good night. Sorry, last little thing for tonight. I was checking out this bowl before I closed the garage for the night. This chatoyance is awesome. Hopefully this camera will pick up the, the way the light shimmers in this 100 year old grain. It is amazingly beautiful. Anyhow, another good little treat. I took one drop, can't even find the spot. Oh, there it is. I took one drop of Mahoney's oil and buffed it on a my scuff mark, my mistake, it pretty much covers it up. I mean, you, st you gotta look close. This will focus. You gotta look close to see it. There it is. But it looks way better now. At first glance, you hardly can notice. <laughs> Anyhow, anything to cover up my imperfections, right? See you in a couple days. All right, I'm back with the finish cedar bowl. Started with that rough looking log from this 100 year old tree that had fallen down in January. I had all kinds of different issues with this bowl, but I couldn't be happier with how it turned out in the end. Just gorgeous, gorgeous grain. Bottom. Bottom's finished with Mahoney's, you could smell through there. Everything else finished with Axe, nice and shiny. I showed you that a twins area. I don't have a good light right now. But you can see the cracks in this that I battled through the whole time. Well, and you could hear it cracking as I did the different portions of this video. A little bit of sapwood. Um, although I learned I'm going to turn turn away sapwood from now on because that Chatoyance was underneath the sapwood. But like I said, there's all those cracks that I painstakingly filled multiple times. But in the end, it's worth it. Got this beautiful, what was it, 10 and a half, 10 and 3 quarters inch bowl. Anyhow, thanks again for watching this very long video. <laughs> and I apologize for how long it was, but hopefully you enjoyed the project. Um, please hit the like button, subscribe if you can, it really helps. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. I'll see you with the next project.